widespread use of the internet has brought with it some challenges, particularly to the security of our personal information and business information systems. Cyberspace has become a new frontier for criminal activity, including data and identity theft. The challenges of cybersecurity have created a new battlefield where governments, corporations, and individuals are all at risk. We've embraced technology with wild abandon, and yet at the same time, we haven't given due consideration, in my opinion, to the potential downsides, the risks, the unintended consequences of using technology. When it comes to the internet, it has produced tremendous savings, there's no doubt, but it's also opened us up to vulnerabilities that we hadn't anticipated. And that involves critical infrastructure online. It involves businesses that are accessing the internet, but also opening themselves up to potential intrusion, data theft, all the array of problems that we're starting to read about in the newspapers. I think we as individuals are very naive to just how widespread this particular uh, issue is uh, and uh, just how much of a threat it is to national security but also to our own personal security. Um, our national infrastructure is under attack, our banking systems are constantly under attack, the computers that we have in our uh, home networks in our own residences are constantly under attack and are being appropriated by people in uh, other countries and also in our own country for, for uh, criminal activity uh, and espionage and threats to national security. Elements in many countries have quietly entered the cyber warfare arena, and their activity poses a risk to our critical infrastructure, including U.S. government and other computer and communications networks. Protecting an information infrastructure requires constant vigilance. In 2002, security breach notification laws were enacted in most U.S. states, including Washington in response to an escalating number of breaches of consumer databases containing personally identifiable information. And in 2008, the U.S. government is pushing to spend $6 billion on cybersecurity. As awareness becomes increasingly important, institutions and universities are putting more resources into and focusing their curriculum on information assurance education. As the director for the Center of Information Assurance and Cybersecurity at the University of Washington Information School, Dr. Barbara Indicott Popofsky has adopted military information training methods in her classroom. Well, it started as a collaboration with West Point and Ron Dodge, who headed up ITOC, which is the West Point unit that trains cadets in information warfare, had developed a military based, contextually military based game that was being used to train cadets and for inner army, navy kinds of competitions. And he translated that game to a civilian kind of application where you're dealing with e-commerce sites that are being bombarded by attackers. And he took that game, that model, to universities and began to engage them in wanting to adopt this gaming environment into their classes. And so I thought it would be great in our information assurance series to include a cyber defense exercise. For the past four years, Barbara had partnered with Fort Lewis to hold a one-day training session. But word spread quickly, and more colleges and universities wanted to participate. So this year, Barbara decided to host the first regional Pacific Rim Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. Microsoft generously offered to sponsor the event. Microsoft chose to be a sponsor in this event because obviously we care a lot about cybersecurity and securing the ecosystem for IT systems across the world, not only for our customers, but for governments and other agencies. I think that cybersecurity is a very critical component of curricula, and so we're glad to support the University of Washington's efforts in producing strong students coming out of university that have really great skills. Securing Microsoft as a host site was a major bonus, but the work was far from done. I'm Christian Seifert. I'm a PhD student at Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. I was uh, part of the organizing committee, um, filling the project management role, so take care of the project plan, things like that. My name is Brian Hay. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Over the last six months, it's been uh, built in this environment, so 
designing the, the system or choosing the systems that were going to be in the environment, uh, building those systems, building test systems, and then the last few days um, has been actually leading the deployment of those systems in the room here. There's an XP box run there that I think I, I may just have done that. I don't know if it's finished yet or not. If it says done at the bottom, then uh, okay. it's finished. We had a, a staging event about two months ago in which we set up a, a small competition environment um, in which we just went through practice exercises, made sure the uh, network is working, the images are up to date, things like that. After seven months of preparation and weekly phone conversations, the final challenge was the two-day setup. My name is Rick Davidson and I'm an undergrad student at University of Washington at Tacoma. The most challenging part of the prior two days was uh, trying to get all the cabling done in, in a way that it wouldn't interfere with the 100 plus bodies that were going to be in here. When you consider not only the ethernet cables but the power cables coming off each box, that's a lot of wire running around. So we wanted to make sure that it was done neatly and safely so that it wouldn't cause problems, people tripping over wires and dragging computers off the tables and whatnot. The room is arranged so that there are nine circular tables and on each table there are nine laptops. Eight of them are configured into the switch and then one is going straight back to the core router and that's what they're using as a backtrack machine so that they can simulate coming from outside their network and testing their own configurations inside. I'd like to welcome all of you to the first annual Pacific Rim Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. And on April 26, 2008, the very first Pacific Rim Regional Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition took place, with nine teams from Washington, Idaho, and Alaska competing. The games begin. Let's rumble. Okay, at least one came online. David, what was this for? Just a sec. Yeah, yeah. Each team in the competition operates as a business. In this case, a newspaper company. Essentially, it's a newspaper site. They have stories that are available on the web. They have users, reporters, editors, managers in their environment that they need to uh, handle, and, and they've got a public on the outside that they need to produce web content for. They need to allow them to uh, set up for delivery of, of the newspaper to their homes, so provide credit card information and things like that. In a perfect world, they want us to come up with a design of how we'd like to see the network, and I'm basically working on that. So I'm basically just doing research right now where Philip and Nick are on the maintenance side. I'm looking for any kind of error messages or anything. They have things pretty covered. There. They're a pretty damn good team, I'd say. This is a very realistic environment because you often come into a new system and you don't know what the previous team has set up. Uh, it could have been good, it could have been bad, or just the main thing is you don't know. And it may or may not be broken, but they, they need to see what's there and see what services are hanging out in the wind that an attacker might want to get a hold of. Each team will be judged and scored in three categories. The first is how well they keep their network up and running properly. Just the, the input I'll give you at this point is uh, you need to get your DHCP and DNS operational as soon as possible. Those sites are currently down right now, and it looks like your website is down at the moment. Okay, check it again, Al. It should have just come back up. I'm Bob Bungie from DeVry University. I'm part of the organizing committee and I'm working the scoring engine. This does automated testing to see if their web servers are running, to see if their email servers are providing email, to see if their domain name servers are resolving internet domain names. They get tested three times within a five minute window. If those services are up and running, they pass their test. If those services are not up and running, they fail their test. 